Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is Master Validation Plan. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple. Make sure you subscribe to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for our agenda and stick around to the end for the three bonus questions. Our topic, Master Validation Plan, links directly to the process validation requirements which come from 820.75 and 1345 section 7.5.6. Master validation plan in five words. List all processes validation status. Each manufacturer will have processes within their quality management system that have to be validated. Those processes may be water systems, sterilization processes, pieces of equipment like packaging and labeling equipment. It may be standalone software. It may be a water system or a sterilization system. All of these processes have to be reviewed to determine whether process validation is required. The regulation in the standard, they give us some flexibility. We can validate those processes or we can fully verify. Validation is required whenever destructive testing is needed to fully verify the process output. What we do with the master validation plan is we list all processes, all systems, all pieces of equipment, all test methods, all pieces of software used within the quality management system, and we capture their validation status. That status is either validated if it is validated, we put the date that it was validated and the date for the next revalidation. Or we will put down fully verified. And if it's full verification, we need to link to that full verification, the documentation supporting the verification. And we also need to capture a rationale for why verification is appropriate in place of process validation. Some manufacturers will have separate lists for processes, equipment, systems, or software. It doesn't matter if it's all in one list or separate lists. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I have a list of all of my processes, equipment, systems, test methods, and software used within my quality management system. Once I have that list, the second part is I capture the validation status whether it's validated or fully verification. And then third, when verification is used in place of validation, I have a documented rationale that supports full verification. So how do I know it's not working? Well, first, my master validation plan itself, it's not complete. It's missing items that it should have on it. Pieces of equipment, software, systems, processes, there are items missing. Second, when I get into the actual validation plan itself, the master validation plan, the decision on whether to validate or fully verify, those decisions are incorrect. And then third, if I do choose full verification, my master validation plan is missing the rationale to support why full verification is appropriate. And now for the three bonus questions. Who manages our master validation plan? Second, how often do we review and update the master validation plan? And then third, are there any processes that require destructive testing as part of confirming process output that we have not validated, where we are doing full verification? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.